Okay, it's, uh, it's important to know that the touch squid is first and foremost a remote control for your uh, home entertainment system, but it's um, secondarily um, a very good uh, tablet computer. If you've never owned a tablet computer or, or a smartphone, um, some of the, the techniques um, of using it um, would be worth uh, giving you a little bit of a refresher on. The Touch Squid uses the Android operating system, which is um, um, a huge uh, system in terms of user devices. Um, there's literally thousands upon thousands of applications that are available um, for Android devices, some of which you pay for, um, but there's a, a, a gigantic library of, of those that are uh, free of charge. Any um, um, smartphone type device, we'll call it that, um, have a touch screen. And there, and there are two types of screens. Uh, there's a capacitive screen and a resistive screen. The industry has pretty well accepted that the resistive screen is not as good, it's not as nice an experience to use as is a capacitive screen. Capacitive screen um, uses the, the uh, principle of a discharge of electricity um, through your finger. Um, and, and in fact, in these screens um, they are what is called a five-way multi-touch screen which is useful for playing games, uh, some of which come with your touch screen, Fruit Ninja being a good example. So if you think of your fingers as being a mouse and you use that to navigate around the screen, so, and some typical things to, to understand, um, and, and this is general terminology but it's, it's useful. We, so we talk about a tap, and I'm going to describe these things and then uh, try to show them to you. So a, a tap is just like a, a tapping on the screen. So I'm going to tap up here where it says Touch Squid Remote Control, and you can see that something has happened. And in a moment, after we go through the Please Wait, now we're at the Touch Squid application um, opening screen. On this device, to get back to the main screen or, or um, dock, uh, as they, it's called, we just give this little house-shaped um, control location up here a, a bit of a thumb stroke, and we're back to the screen. So that's, uh, that's a tap. Now a press um, would have been what I demonstrated up up here. And so I'm just going to do another tap and we'll open up the touchscreen app. Now this is in fact a press. So we're pressing that and yeah, and you're not pressing like you're pressing a button but it's, it's and, and it's, it's a, a little bit firmer of a, of a, a press on the, on the screen or screen area. Some of these techniques, it just takes a little bit of practice. I, I don't think it would take a person more than five minutes of playing with the device to, to get a feel for that. The next thing I want to show you is what a slide is. Now if you look on the top here, you're going to see five little dashes. And if you look carefully, when that fish goes by, the center dash is a little bit more lit, if you like. It's a little bit brighter than the ones on either side. Each of those dashes represents a screen. And the one that's lit, in this case the middle one, is the screen that we're looking at. So if we just put our finger on this screen anywhere we want and drag it across, you now see that that has gone to the, uh, the, the second dash is lit up. Or we do it again, and now the first dash is lit. And each of these screens we can put icons on that will control other parts of your touch squid. So that's now back to screen number two. Whoops. There's screen number three. There's screen number four. There's screen number five. So 
as you can see, there's lots of room to have lots of different icons on this um, dock or desktop, if, for those of you that are familiar with uh, Windows terminology. Um, there's also a thing called a flick, and a flick is a little different than a slide, and I don't have anything on the screen that can show you this, but I can just show you it with my finger. This is a slide. You'll notice that I haven't removed my finger from the screen. It's still on the screen. Where a flick would be if I did that. So if I just put my finger on, in this case I'm, I'm flicking down. If I put my finger on the top and did that, that is a flick. And then lastly, a drag. Now a, a drag is, a, it'll be similar in appearance to a slide except what I'm aiming to do is you can see this icon right here just above my finger I want to move that icon over here so what I would do is I would touch the icon leaving my finger on it and then drag the, it over to where I want it to be and release my finger so in fact what I'm doing is I'm dragging that icon somewhere else on the screen so now if I want to drag it back I put my finger on it I drag it back to where I want, release my finger, and there it is back to where it was. So that's a drag. In some um, situations, particularly in, in some games, um, you might be asked to do a multi-drag. And that's, that's similar to a regular drag, although with a regular drag, that is the one that we just that's this one, and I'll just do it again. We, we're dragging that to there. Now we drag it back. A multi-drag would be if you use two, three, or maybe even four fingers to, to do something similar. And in a game, that's going to do something different than a single finger drag. I know this seems all kind of complicated and silly, especially for some of you older folks, but uh, that's just the way this technology works. Hope that helps. Now there's a couple of other kind of uh, fun things that we can do. You can see we've created an icon up here on the top and this just opens up a web page that, um, that we had um, done before this demonstration. And this, was, this is a, any typical web page. This is connected to the internet. But um, maybe we want to move this thing up a little bit. So we can, we can flick the page to wherever we want. Um, and now our, the printing is a little small, so we take, and it's called a pinch, and what we've done is we pinch our fingers together and then spread them apart. So fingers are pinched, spread them apart. They're still together, bring them back, and so we can enlarge this type so that some of us with older eyes can actually read the screen, well, even though it's an extremely clear screen anyway, but uh, it certainly does enlarge the text so that it's easier to read and then we can flick or we can slide and we can slide or we can flick so it, it gives us a very fast way of maneuvering around the screen so to get back to our desktop again we just hit the home button and there we are back to the desktop so with a little bit of practice um, you'll become very adept at manipulating around in the device. For any of you that have, that have a smartphone or, or a similar device, um, all of what I've just talked about you'll be already be familiar with, but if the technology is new to you, it's going to take you a few minutes of practice of just how to, uh, how to maneuver on the screen. Most important thing to remember though is, is that when you're touching these buttons, and I'm calling them buttons, they're really icons, um, you, and, and if someone says to press, you're not pressing like you're trying to push the thing through the back of the device. It's, it's just a, you know, a, a lightish finger touch and hold for, you know, like for dragging this. Um, you, you know, we're not distorting the screen in any way. It's just, it's, you're just putting your finger on and holding it. A tap would be just a similar thing but you're just it's just a momentary contact now to get back to the main main uh, uh, start screen you, you just um, 
um, touch the um, or, or press rather the uh, the home button, and we're back. So I think you'd probably find that with five or ten minutes of practice, you'll be very comfortable with manipulating the screen.